Viewers hope you all are well. I am pretty well too. Today we will try to know about the settings of TP-Link Anchor B900 router. You all know that it is quad band Wi-Fi 7 router. So now let's go inside the control panel of the router. As you can see I am now inside the router control panel. Here we first see network map, then internet, then wireless, then home shield, then screen display and then an option called advanced. So let's see in detail what settings are inside these options and how we will use those settings. First of all when we go inside the router we can see here there is an option called update in this case we will not do any update right now so we leave the option to update it later. You can see right now I am inside the network map option and it first shows internet status through which we can know about the status on the internet with the necessary options like connection type, internet IP address and online duration. After that, we can see a router icon and individually observe the Wi-Fi status in detail if we click on it. We are able to track every Wi-Fi signal and know their detailed activities. What's new here is that a new Wi-Fi signal called Wi-Fi 6 has been added to this router, which means that we'll be able to use it along with a new option called Wi-Fi 7. Apart from that, the previous signals are present here like the 2.4 GHz signal and 5 GHz signal we can see here. Also, we can see an additional 5 giga signal. You can control those devices from here if you have any IoT devices or IoT related connections with your network. Also, you can see detailed information about the performance of this router from here, such as CPU load memory US. You can see some necessary displays from here. Also, you can observe its Ethernet ports from here through which Ethernet is working here, which Ethernet is not working or which SFT port is working or which port you want to disable from here, you can control everything from here. If look at the next option, it is called Internet. From here, we have to do all the settings of the Internet. So let's see here, we can see three Internet WAN ports and each port we see here as 10 gigabytes. We see basically two WAN interfaces, basically three interfaces, but acting as a dual interface where the WAN will act as either an SFT port or an Ethernet port. In that case, the first port we can work as the Internet in or WAN through any port WAN option and next port we can work as failover or load balance. The name of the next option is Internet Connection, which means through this option we have to determine the Internet through which type of connection or protocol will enter the router. In this case, I want to say here that this router has all the currently available broadband connection facilities. You can drop down. You can see in the link that almost all types of broadband service providers provide the ability to take all types of credentials of the internet connection. Here you can see that under internet connection type POE, L2PT, PPTP, DS Lite, WAP Plus, Map Econ, all these interconnect options are enabled. And you can see that this router has the advantage of using a large bandwidth up to a maximum of 10 gigabytes to 10 gigabytes for a total of 20 gigabytes and for the convenience of using two connections. If one connection goes offline for some reason, then the internet will remain active through the other connection. The next option is wireless connection or Wi-Fi settings. This is basically why this router is so special. This router uses Wi-Fi 7 technology. Let us now see how to configure the Wi-Fi 7 router or the settings for its configuration are done correctly. The Wi-Fi setup of this one can be set up exactly like the previous routers. You have to complete the settings in the same way as you have done the Wi-Fi settings in the previous TP-Link routers. There is nothing special to do here, but there are several new options that I have added to you. Try to show through the screen share. You can see here the 5GHC settings of this router and a setting named 6GHC. And this 6GHC means Wi-Fi 7. We can safely say that with Wi-Fi 7, you will get much more Wi-Fi range or coverage. And in that case, more specifically, you'll benefit from using a lot more bandwidth since we still use many old Wi-Fi devices. In this case, you have to make settings here separately for the previous Wi-Fi signals like 2, 4GHZ and 5GHZ and now the new 7GHZ or 6GHZ option which is added here. Well, in this video, I tried to show you all of them and you can set the password separately in all of them and you can give the network name. In this case, I want to say again that the guest network that is on this router, the guest network is different in each option. You can use the old and new signal ranges separately. For example, you can use the Wi-Fi 7 range if you want. And if you want, you can use the old 2, 4GHZ or 5GHZ signals. 
The next option is Home Shield. If you enter this option, you will see the Network Check option. You can solve it if there is any error in the network. If we look at the next option, we can see that it says Parental Control. Through this Parental Control, you can control the number of devices used by children in your home, which children can use which mobile, where or on which website. You can solve it. The next option is Course, which allows you to control the bandwidth of the devices on your network. You can select how much bandwidth or speed a device will use from here. Currently, the list you can see on the screen is the list of devices used in this router. If you want, you can select who will use these devices at what speed. Through the next option, you can download the TP-Link application from Play Store or App Store on your mobile and control all the modules of this router from your mobile. The next option is Skin Display. Through this option, you can control the display on the router. For this, you need to download an app from Play Store through QR code and through those apps, you can perform all the display functions of your router from here. The next option is a very important option called Advance. This option is for advanced users who understand the router very well in advance or have a very good idea about the router. They can control it manually from here and can customize the settings very nicely. When you first enter this option, you will see an option called Status from where all the status of the router, connecting options and IP LAN IP and every connected information is here. The next option is Internet. From here, you can set up the internet connection manually as per your wish. We have seen such options before but from here you will get some important options like NAT setup with MAC clone, internet port navigation speed setting, flow controller. After this we can see an option called LAN. From here you can customize the IP. Of the line it is called local IP. Here you can see the IPs of the IDs to which your devices will be connected. Here you can do things like port forwarding from here. Also here you will see some options like VLAN, from where you can do VLAN tagging and system configuration separately for IPTV. After this, you can see the DHCP server in all types of routers, but from here you can do all your DHCP related internet customization tasks, in which case you can adjust all the IP related DHCP requirements from here. Next is Dynamic DNS. Through this Dynamic DNS, your router can be assigned any kind of domain name or if the router is on your local ID, then this type of Dynamic DNS is required to access the router from outside your network. Next, there is an option related to routing, which it needs to be discussed in a big way. So through this video, I don't want to discuss it so much here because it is a big task. As you can see, first starting routing routing table is shown here. So this option is basically all. Hopefully, you will see it in new routers and we will try to make a big video about this in the future and discuss it with you in a big way. The next option is TP Link ID. Through this TP Link ID, you can know the status of your router and can control the router as you wish from mobile apps or web. The next setting is very important for a router because it is the wireless setting of the router so here you can actually see an option named wireless settings. At the very top you can see a wireless settings option called 2. 4 ghz and 5 ghz and 5 ghz 2 and there you can first name your network and then select what kind of security you want to use here. After that you can see the option to choose what kind of transmit power to use. Transmit power and channel depends on how far you want to use your wireless signal. Then you can see the channel width. This channel width means that you can select the width of the wireless signal you want to use. If you want to use your channel network over a long distance, you can use this maximum option. The next option is very important for this router because this router is specialized for this signal. Here you can see an option called 6GHC which is known as Wi-Fi 7. The next option we can see is Guest Network. Basically all TP-Link routers have this option. In this case you can use Wi-Fi 7 and 5 signals separately for your guest network. You can also create passwords for the guest network as needed. Next we can see the settings like IoT network system here and next we see an option like schedule and after that we have WPS setting and then there are some necessary settings like additional settings. This router has a very important setting or option. We can say it is USB sharing or through USB you can use any device wirelessly. If you want, you can use the printer using the USB option. In that case, it is a printer. The share will be used as an option 
Otherwise, you can use your hard disk for FTP server or file sharing. With time machine function, you can select the USB drive connecting to TP-Link router as the backup disk of your MacBook. Go to Advanced, USB Settings, Time Machine and then enable the function. Make sure your MacBook is connected to the router. Open System Preferences and click on Time Machine on your MacBook. The next option is NAT Forwarding, where there are necessary options like Port Forwarding, such as Port Triggering, UPnP, DMZ. These options are seen in almost all routers. I think those who need them know how to use them, so it's time to talk about this. It would not be right to waste. Here we see the Home Shield option once again inside the Advanced option. We have discussed these same options once before, so we are skipping this option here as we do not find any need to discuss this option here. We have already discussed what this option can do at the beginning of the video, so those who need it can take another look at the beginning. Now the option we see is a very important option for this router where there are some detailed options about security and firewall which will define the security of your network. In this case you can see first the firewall option and then there is access control, then IP and MAC blinding, then ALG, then device isolation. These things are common because these options are found in TP-Link router almost every router so I guess there are many types of people who know these things very well or you have knowledge about it. Virtual Private Network A VPN helps you access internet resources remotely, securely and privately with tunneling technology. You can use VPN client through this router so from here you will get different types of VPN client option then you can use this VPN client through that type of client. Through VPN server, you can share your internet with anyone else through VPN. It is a matter of extensive configuration, so it is not possible to give all kinds of information in this video. So it is necessary to create a separate video, but there are many on the internet about this topic. There is a video. If necessary, you can watch the VPN server setup video of any router of Tiplink and set up this setting. This wireless router supports IPv6. So if your ISP wants you to connect via IPv6, you can easily do that via this router and you can configure IPv6 LAN here. Another smart feature of this router is that you will get Alexa support through which you can give any command to the router through voice commands. Another great advantage is that if you live under a large mesh network, you can connect or merge it with this mesh network and control your mesh network through this router very easily. Here you can see a mesh network like a demo network that gives you an idea of how the mesh network is controlled or how the mesh network looks like or how it will look like if you build it with the mesh network but you from here getting. This option is a very necessary and important option for a router where various necessary updates and settings of the router are done. But we can see the same type of settings that most routers have in this router. Like first we can see the firmware update. The next option we found is backup and restore. Through this backup and restore, you can backup any settings of your router and restore it later if you want. Want to return means that you want to return to the condition in which you bought it. Then you can do it from there. In the next option, we can see administration. Through this administration, you can correct all the passwords of the router and change them if necessary. And this router has a new option that you can see right now, that is password recovery. This router has an option password recovery, which if you have done the settings before, then if you have forgotten the password in the future, then you can recover the password from here or through the After that, we can see that local management and remote management are the two that how you want to access the router from outside your network or from inside your network. You have to settle the permissions from here and then you can work with the access of this router. Now we can see that there is an information panel named system log and from there you can see the logs of the internet you are using and you can save those logs as needed. The next option is called diagnostics and it lets you diagnose your router or your internet connection to find out about some issues like ping. The next options are very normal and common which are seen in almost all routers so I don't want to talk about it. You can see for yourself that there is time and language through which you can change the time and language and after that there is reboot which you can remotely reboot the router. 
Commands can be issued as needed and next is the LED control through which you can control the lights of the router. Then there is the operation mode from which you can set or change the mode you want your router to operate in and lastly there is the about from which you can control your router. You will get some detailed information 